Shalom, first and foremost, Kohloyim, Wakabad, La Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rawachak Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, got throughout the four corners of the earth. Haman Malone, vocab, listen up. You are plantation renaissance Christians, listen up. You Israelites that try to save Esau, try to make justifications for him, try to water down a doctrine to justify him, listen up. Find here in Romans 9, it says in verse 13, Jacob I love. Now there's a specific name, Jacob and Yaakov. God says, I loved Jacob. So in answer to the question, does the Bible ever say that God loved anybody at any time? The answer is he loved Jacob. Second question, does the same Bible ever say that God hates certain people? Ah, same verse, Jacob, I loved Esau, I hate it. Well, then evidently, there are those whom God loves and there are those whom God hates. Obviously, hello? Dealing with the humanist, I say, but God hates the sin but loves the sinner. <laughs> One should begin to talk. And that's common logic. All right, that, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. So did y'all hear that? That's that's plain. But, uh, you know, when we bring that out, we're labeled a hate group. And the most I said that. And did the most I, did he ever change his mind? To you Christians out there, did the most I ever change his mind? Does he no longer feel that way? Or he at some point stopped feeling that way? The most I now, he doesn't believe his own words anymore. I mean, you you tell me. Vocab, you know, maybe you got the answer to that. Well, I know there's uh some scriptures that says this. Because he did say he loved Jacob. And that was the only people he said he actually loves in the, in the entire Bible. Uh, let's go to uh, Malachi 3 and verse 6. Maybe the Lord changed his mind or something. You know, by the time, uh, you know, he sent his only begotten son on the scene. Malachi 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are, are not consumed. You know, that that's... Evidence that the Lord do love us because all the, despite all the transgressions, the disobedience for the amount of years that we've, uh, you know, been disobedient to him as a nation, we're still not destroyed. So obviously the Lord, you know, the fact that he's preserved us through all these judgments and these captivities and, you know, still being under the curse, but still subject to his hope and still uh, waiting a, a promise. He, he, he definitely has shown that he uh, loves us. All right. That's why we're not destroyed. We're not consumed. So the Lord never changes. All right. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's get another translation to make it even more clear. Uh, the NLT, it says, I am the Lord. I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. All right. You say, why, where do you, do you love us? Well, you're, you're not destroyed. The Lord ain't uh, make us like unto Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. He didn't uh, cast us off from being uh, his people. All right, we're still here. Uh, NIV, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. All right, and the Lord did not replace us. There's no such thing as replacement theology. All right, that's uh, another uh, heretic theology. Uh, human construct by 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 satan another doctrine of the devil all right where you're gonna have seducing spirits you know deceiving the people and got people you know turn into fables and away from the truth the lord did not cast away his people which he foreknew all right don't let the devil deceive you all right he loves his he loved jacob until this very day all right. Even it says in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Because at the end of the day, he's going to he, he still chose uh, Israel. 
but he's going to have mercy upon us. Uh, Isaiah 60 and I think it's what, 21? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me go up. I think it's verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Isaiah 60, verse 10. It says, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. It's talking about the other nations. This is what the Lord's going to do for the, the people that he love, right? Jacob, Yaquab, for in my wrath how I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And that's why it says in the in the 14th chapter that he would uh have mercy upon uh, Jacob. Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Not a replaced Israel, this the, the, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And I don't even got to read the rest. You already know what this says. All right, but proven that the Lord still loves his people, but he still hates another people. And clearly, you know, this guy, he made it plain, just using logic. Okay? It, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Okay? The Lord said what he said, for the Lord have spoken it. All right? But Christians try to change the Mosai's mind and put words in his mouth that he never said. You know, misinterpreting the writings, all right, of uh, our, our Lord himself, the, the Messiah, Mashiach, Apostle Paul, and, and, you know, things of that such. But even in a, even in the New Testament, all right, because we know that the Mosiah, when he speaks something, he's not going to uh, go back. All right, let's go to uh, real quick numbers, and then we're going to go to the New Testament, showing that the Lord does not change. Uh, numbers 23 and 19. And it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He ha Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? And he's going to make it good to show that he do hate Eat Esau, eat him, because the judgment that he's going to bring to the world, especially, you know, when, when the Lord comes back with the host of heaven, with the angels, he's going to show his indignation. That final judgment, the, the, the day of the Lord, the second death, that's tailor-made for the people he hates. Okay? So he's going to make it good. He's going to show the world. That he meant what he said. All right. Now let's get another. Let's get the other translations on this one. Because the Lord is not going to change his mind or, you know, his judgments just to appease your opinion or your emotion. All right. The Lord is not. He, he's not a man. OK. It even tells you that in Isaiah 47 that when he comes back, he will not meet you as a man. Because a man has, you know, a man can get emotional in his feelings. A man can uh, have respect of persons. A man can be uh, bribed and paid off. A man can actually change, man. Okay? The Lord ain't double-minded. Once he's spoken a thing, that's it. So if the Lord hates Esau, guess what? To this very day. All right? It says uh, in the NLT, it says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. <laughs> All right, plain. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? You know, that's, I mean, that's, come on, man. All right, uh, NIV, God is not human, that he should lie, not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Hey, even Obadiah verse 18, he said, for the Lord have spoken it, man. All right, that, you know, he going to basically uh, have the nation of Israel become a, like a consuming fire and, and, and destroy Esau, Edom, and there will be no more remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord have spoken it. 
So if the Lord speaks it, is he not going to act on it? Sure, he will. And that's the, and that right there is an act of, of hate. Obadiah verse 18, that's, that's an act of hate from God. All right. And he's going to use his people to do it. So let's, uh, let's go to the New Testament now. Let's go to James uh, 1. I believe it's in the first chapter. Yep, this is uh, James 1 and verse uh, 16. It says, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. I right, like this wisdom that we have, this truth. This, this comes from above, man. This is why people on earth in their fleshly mind can't get it. They can't understand this. Okay, because this comes from above. This comes from the height of the heavens and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variable variableness, neither shadow of turning. What does that mean? Let's look up variableness. But somehow Christians will still find a way to spend the scriptures. Because their God is their own belly. Your fear, the most high is taught by the precept of men. All right, it says variation. All right, it's from the Greek word paralage. Variation, change. All right, right here in the strong definition, transmutation of phase or orbit, i.e. figuratively fickleness. You know, so if the most high said he hates Esau, but then now he loves everybody. That would make the Lord fickle. So you're saying the most high is a, is a fickle God? So that's why people take Christianity as a joke. All right. The God that you Christians created is a straight joke, man. That's not the God of the Bible. Look up the word fickle, fickleness. Change your ability, especially as regards one's loyalties or affections. Okay. You know, given to erratic changeableness. The Lord don't change, man. You're not going to change for you. All right. And like Apostle Paul said, after he quoted Malachi, is there unrighteousness with the most high? God forbid. All right. So, hey, it is what it is, man. But I, I had to. This little clip right here, I was like, "Yep, let me let me let me do a a video on that." All right, matter of fact, let me let, let you hear it again. All right, he and this guy, he might not even be an Edomite, you know. He got that Italian accent. He might be a Jake. You would never know, but he's right. Let's let's listen to it again. Find here in Romans nine, it says in verse thirteen, "Jacob I love." Now there's a specific name, Jacob and Yaakov. God says, I loved Jacob. So in answer to the question, does the Bible ever say that God loved anybody at any time? The answer is he loved Jacob. Second question, does the same Bible ever say that God hates certain people? Yeah, same verse, Jacob, I loved Esau, I hated. Well, then evidently, there are those whom God loves and there are those whom God hates. Obviously, hello? Dealing with the humanists, I say, but God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. <laughs> Fine. Oh, because these people don't speak according to the Bible. You know, these people really, they, they despise the word of the Most High. You know, and we know what the Bible says about that. I, I, I don't even have to get it, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You know, you 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 Christians want to challenge that, then go go right ahead, <laughs> go ahead and uh, twist the word of the Most High, and see see what that do. Scriptures say, "Add not unto his words, lest thou be found a liar." All right. So anyway, you know, I'm gonna give all praise to Yahweh Shai, and to the next lesson, Shalom.